As we are keeping our distance, many of you are finding inspiration to create new music and art, such as the case for Goddamn Glen and Parlor Bells. We talked all about it. Enjoy. Well, good afternoon, Goddamn Glen. I don't really know um, where you are right now. Are you in a traveling in a time machine? Where, what are yes. you doing? Uh, <laughs> well, what, would, what, would make, what, what makes you think that it looks like a time machine? Because of the old timey. Uh, the little old timey. I mean, your, your attire is hip in 21st century. Yeah, yeah. But you've got a little bit of a throwback, a little noir flavor. Is that what's yeah. happening in there? I guess. I mean, so my big thing lately is have you heard this thing called. Um, uh, it's called bookshelf envy or bookshelf and it's something like that but basically the idea is that now that everybody's communicating this way that everybody's judged on like their bookshelves In you fact, can't be on tv unless you have a bookshelf right right apparently. and i saw this weird ad somebody pointed out the other day and it was it was you know what i knew exactly what they were doing but they were standing in front of a bookshelf and all the books were turned around so you could see the paper not the not the names you couldn't judge but, them well, you couldn't judge them, but also what a stupid looking book bookshelf. But then I thought to myself, like, all right, did they do that because they want to like, you know, uh, you know, licensing stuff or whatever. But, right. uh, but yeah, so anyways, Bookshelf Envy brought me to this. Um, yes, I'm in my studio. Green Light and Go uh, is, you know, I've I kind of already had a little setup for this, as you know, in terms mm -hmm. of doing the whole thing. So when this went down, I was like, whoa, this is my time, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so um so yeah, so I'm in the uh, comfort of my home. You I can like see that um, my my uh, some of the pictures that I put up behind me temporarily are falling off. I'm I'm sort of redecorating down yeah. here, and everything is just in piles. This looks nice and neat right here, but yeah. everywhere else there's just piles of. I I pulled out old CDs and I have stacks yeah. of posters I want to frame and hang on walls. Yeah. So I made it print. No no bookshelf right now. Right. Um, well, that's okay. I mean, I think for what you do, you probably want to get a bunch of flyers and posters and stuff up there. Um, I mean, if you were to if you were to look outside this box, you would see nothing but like wires. <laughs> and I mean, it's a disaster in here because and it's crazy because like, like my wife and I share the space now. Um, you know, so she does her business. And I, you know, obviously I, I conduct my business here, a lot of virtual business. Conducting business. Yes. So let me ask you this. You, yeah. You're always, I mean, I've known you for a long time. We've been friends mm -hmm. for a while. Parlor yeah. Bells has been going on for quite a while. In 10 years. Incarnations. Um, do you feel like this is, this is providing more, he had a different kind of I don't know, inspiration for you, what we're going through right now? Uh, yeah, and I'm surprised I found <clears throat> it. I'm surprised I found that inspiration because uh, honestly, the first thing people wanted to do when this started going down, especially like my creative friends were, Glenn, do, can you do a cover <clears throat> of this song? Can you do this? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, look, I know I have all the time in the world right now, but I am just not feeling it right now. Yeah. I just... You know, as a creative person, yeah. you know, when that goes away, it's, it's scary. So, you know, so for, for, you know, probably a couple of weeks, I would say I was just obsessed with, you know, the new sort of logistics of things, you know, just the exhaustion of, you know, you know I, 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 I zoom in, zoom in everything, everything. So, so it, it was only like more recently that I said, all right, what do I have? You know, I, I need to be creative again. I want to make music. What, what can I find that's something lonely, something that sort of, you know, fits the vibe? And I, I found, you know, I, I pulled something from the, I wouldn't say it's the back burner, but it was sort of like, it wasn't really something the band had played live. It wasn't really something the band <coughs> was that familiar with. I think I yeah. shared it with them yeah. like a while back, but, uh, but it was just a yeah, demo. And, um, you know, I just said one day, I'm like, hey, I wonder if Jay... You know, Jay and I, Jay, my guitar player, Jay Johnson, um, we've been doing the logic sort of like we, we do our demos. We, we've done demos like this before. Tech talk warning. Oh, what's that? <laughs> Tech talk warning. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry logic. Yeah. So I'm just going to say we used a computer mm -hmm. and. Uh, you recorded digitally. Digitally, right. And, and that, that actually, that whole thing about doing demos and, and working, you know, making home demos first goes all the way back to the beginning of Parlor Bells. Like Nate and I actually wrote 
the first uh, few demos were, I think the first songs we released were all recorded um, yeah. from home. Yeah. And then it was on, wasn't until after we you know, had a little success with that that we you know, put the money together and went into a studio and stuff. Um, so, so the whole, I, so, so, you know, then I continued that sort of uh, working creative relationship with Jay Johnson um, <coughs> and we were doing stuff like that for Waylaid in the Melee. So pretty much everything starts as a demo with me anyhow so sending stuff is, back and forth that's not unusual for no, no many no. bands right 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 so you did the first song that you were released in this um it, we're not post-covid world yet but right. we're sort of like in the interim covid world yes um the, the ballad of felix monkla yes yeah so, who is that and and why is this important so well all right so you know, like, I think a lot of songwriters write their songs first, <laughs> and then sometimes they have to sort of think about, you know, like, sometimes it goes either way. Sometimes my lyrics come first. Sometimes my music comes first. Um, uh, this was one of those tunes that I wasn't really sure. I wasn't even sure if it was really a Parlor Bell song, um, but I realized it's a Parlor Bell song for now, you know what I mean, for yeah. this time period. So, um, so I was, over the summer, um, I got into reading some, like, vintage comic books. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, uh, okay. it's about UFOs, it's from okay. the 50s and stuff. And I, I read, I came across this story that I had never heard. Uh, you know, it's a true, you know, uh, UFO sort of story. And I'm, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theory guy, but I do like, you know, science fiction. I do I like UFOs. And there was this whole story about this guy that just, uh, they, this, <laughs> this Air Force pilot and uh, actually in his um, navigator, uh, they were in pursuit of this UFO. And they basically disappeared off the face of the earth. And it's a real story. They never recovered the... Uh, so it's like that know. Malaysian airplane that we don't know what happened to also. Exactly. And, you know, I, I think the reason why I was uniquely intrigued by it is that a few cases <laughs> out there are the ones that, like, are, are just unresolved. And that's one of them. And then I started thinking about, like, what they were releasing lately with the, with the you know, the Air Force footage, seeing those things. So it's like, you know, who knows? And, you know, it's, it's, it, I was really just sort of uh, trying to find sort of a, a story to use as a, a narrative of loneliness and isolation that you know could be relatable so I, I i started sort of riffing on that a little bit i mean stylistically the song which i really like um it does have sort of that um longing sort of vibe to it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah um it, i mean i had the melody worked out i had the the idea it, it it was like it it did feel like there was some longing some some sadness um and it was what's those, next sort of this unknown thing that yeah. we were all in the middle of yeah exactly and it didn't really feel like i wasn't really sure what kind of song it was going to be but then when i was in the midst of all of this i'm like ah this feels kind of like uniquely lonely and um you know so yeah so so you call this um sort of this work you you're in the middle of the anti body sessions as a, right. like a literal sense like there's no existing human people congregating together yeah yeah empty I spaces being, i was being clever and i was like <laughs> so because, because we're, yeah because we're talking about antibodies and stuff and um you know everything medical that's happening right now and 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 quite literally uh parlor bells had just gotten a space at some um the <laughs> oh, rehearsal yeah. complex we just got this place we had a regular we had we were built we were decorating <clears> the place <throat> i put up all my rock posters and everything so excited we had two i want to say we had two rehearsals in there we, we actually brought in alice <clears throat> and sigris um to play keys with us Excellent. and we, we managed from a to lot get, of like, bands a number yes. of bands and she and Great unfortunately player. we got to do maybe two rehearsals with her in this new space before we basically said uh, and we we had a rehearsal lined up and I was looking I I was tracking this whole coronavirus thing kind of early and I and I said to the group I'm like we probably shouldn't get together because um, it seems like every day this story is changing and that's kind of why I kind of saw all the closures mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. cancellations sort of coming in advance because I was I started to think I'm like why is it that I say one thing one day and then the next day it like mm -hmm. happens and it's it, it really is a day-to-day -day thing and I, I realized that because it it was like that it was like we should just not do it and it turns out we were right because I mean you know the sixth space uh you know the droplets the whole thing I mean you're you're in a space with a bunch of people um you know I'm mm -hmm. sure everybody in the band is healthy but you, you just don't know <laughs> you just uh, don't know I mean we don't know that the, the 
people are carriers evidently and right. some people are affected more than others I could for, be, yeah. for whatever reason it's not you know we said it just was going to affect affect the the older generation that's that's not the case at all right right anyone's, no anyone's at play right. um so that's interesting do you remember what around what time that was because i recall so today is may 13th two um, months ago yeah we had a show scheduled uh in manchester new hampshire and we canceled it right. and we were at the very sort of beginning of the cancellations and yeah we were rolling into New Hampshire from Massachusetts with a bunch of people. So, you know, crossing state lines and things like that. We canceled yeah. a show in Manchester and I am very certain that uh, the venue was upset by it. Yeah. Um, well, their numbers were we down. We were so much until farther recently. along. Yeah. 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 We were so much farther along as a state. So, so here we are day for me, I guess it's probably day 60. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, so, um, so, I mean, just not to disclose too much, but, but my <clears throat> wife has a client who is from China and was yeah. traveling to China, yeah. and she was coming back right when things were being reported about uh, how bad it was in China. And I'm not sure if you'd heard many other stories yet, but, but basically I said, I said, you know, hon, you should probably talk to her about, um, you know, maybe canceling her appointments because when, when she works with people, she works, you know, in close proximity. And this was going way back. And sure enough, the, the client, her client actually was like, yeah, you're totally right. I mean, uh, because she knows she's, she's from China and uh, she knows how serious it is. And we weren't really taking it seriously. So me, I'm kind of obsessive to begin with. So I, uh, I started locking myself down uh, pretty early. And um, yeah, yeah. So it's probably been, uh, I want to say March. You know, it's funny. I always go by like March 13th for some reason, because I think that- Friday the 13th. You know why? Because I had a, a, a client appointment that I had to do. I didn't have to be there, but I could be there. It, mm -hmm. it was one of those things. And I just said, can I not be there? Because I don't know, this is weird. It's downtown. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. It yeah. Turns out a couple of days later, the building that I was supposed to be was shut down. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's like, you know, it's a, it is, like I said, a day to day thing. So probably about 60, is that, is that 60 days now? Yeah. Yeah, today's March. Uh, today's May thirteenth, so March thirteenth was when, in my household, we officially started just um, changing our plans. Yeah, yeah, I know the rumble. Plans. I mean, it's the rumble would have been over now, right? The rumble would have been over. The rumble wow. would have been finals would have been Friday, May first. Yeah. So that was that was certainly weird missing that. <clears throat> so we have a rumble rescheduled for the very end of july and most of august yeah it's hard to say it really is i mean i i, I got a i got a i so i had a concert that i was supposed to go to in may just at the paradise and uh they you know i i, I knew that they were going to reschedule and they rescheduled it to september and i'm even looking at september and they give me the option of getting your money back by i want to say by june 1st they're letting people like you know I'm like, I really would love to go to the show, but I don't know. I don't know if I would be ready then. I just, I, just I try to read as much as I can mm -hmm. about what's being written about, you know, live entertainment and venues and yeah. the various sizes and how this is affecting definitely the independent venues. Um, you know, and they were the first to close and they will be the last to open and it will be limited capacity. Mm -hmm. Will that affect ticket pricing? Probably. Um, it's going to be a whole new level, a, a whole new burden placed on the people who work in venues because there's going to be so much sanitization mm -hmm. um, that's going to have to go into play. It's going to be a lot to wrap our heads around. And then we as patrons, yeah. we're going to have to change our behavior. And how, what that looks like, I don't really know yet. Uh, that's And that's the thing. I think that... I think that um, you know, people are in this rush to get back to normal, but I think they should spend their time right now, like really planning on how they get to a new normal because, because it's not going to, it's like you say, it's There's going to be. We're not going to go back to normal. Right. Right. I mean, someday, but, yeah. uh, but in the immediate future, people, it would be beneficial for them to think about, all right, how am I going to lay out this room? How am I going to protect people from others? How am I going to enforce 
safety among the crowd. How am I, you know, all of these things need to be taken. And it's, it's a lot of planning. I mean, it's a lot of planning, but I don't think it's impossible. It's just that people really need to sort of, I, the, the, the thing that people need to get away from is the rush to get to things. I, that's, that's my, my Well, point, I think the I think danger, it, there, there's real danger there if we try to do that. And I know that we've all, we've, you know, you and I have lots of conversations. We text back and forth these various yeah. things. Um, it, it's really a matter of how we roll it out. We have to roll it out very slowly and very carefully. Now we have these instances where people are, it's, it's just like people are over it and they've right. just decided that it doesn't really exist as a problem anymore because they made the decision that they're tired of staying home. That's not really how it works. No, and it doesn't, the, the thing that's scary, and I think that we're very blessed and because, you know, people look at Massachusetts and they say, oh, wow, look at all those cases there. I, I've said from day one that the reason why we have all, the reason why you have more cases is we have more testing. We have, we have the best yeah. hospitals. I mean, it's, we're just in a very unique part. I, I mean, from Bill Gates to, you know, so many others, if you put the testing there, you're going to find more cases. You, I mean, the, <laughs> Trump himself said something like, we don't want to test more because the testing, you know. We'll reveal more and higher numbers. And I'm like, what, what is that? That's like basically saying, oh, I, I found out that I have cancer, but I'm not going to do anything about it. So it's just crazy to me. It doesn't make yeah. any sense. Just don't talk about um, it and it doesn't exist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that in mass, we're actually kind of, I think people should try to stay. It's really hard to stay positive, obviously, but I, I think that, uh, that the, the one thing that we do have is that we do have really good medical professionals. And I think that that will filter out to, you know, um, local governments. Um, it's definitely going to be, you know, it's going to be challenging and it's going to be painful and it's going to be, it's probably not going to be as much fun, quite frankly. I mean, but, uh, you know, like anything else, you have to sort of figure out what can we get away with? It's like the song. It's like, I know that I would love to like, you know, get all of this tracked in a proper studio and support mm -hmm. the studio. Of course, of course. You know, and like give them my money, but uh, you know, it's not going to happen. So it's like, so you come to this decision, do I, how do I be creative? How do I, because there really isn't, I just don't see it. I just don't see the, the light at the end of the tunnel yet. So I'm like, well, all right. Everybody's, you know, we're, we're, we're listening to, uh, you know, press conferences every day, all this like, you know, noise. And I said, mm. I need to like, you know, I need to put something out there. So, so that, you know, that was, that's kind of, you know, making, making do and sort of sacrificing certain things is definitely, you know, it's, it's definitely part of like some of what these songs will be. But uh, we're taking them as far as we can with the resources that we have. Are you intending, as Parlor Bells, intending on, um, is your short-term goal right now or your short-term plan to roll out songs as, yeah. as you're getting them completed the way you're comfortable yes. with them? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We have, we're started working on the next one already, actually. Um, I have, like, I have a lot of, you know, ideas that are quiet little experimental things and a lot of them would fit you know where we're at right now so i'm just gonna say let's keep doing these um we're gonna get more sophisticated we're turning the some rehearsal space like we're like transforming it into a, a basically a, a drum studio so jess can do her things and um you know get get real good sounds um you know so so we're, we're getting more sophisticated we're all sort of pitching in in our own way everybody's got a little bit of like um you know creativity to bring to the table so so yeah we're gonna we're just gonna keep doing this and then you know the songs that i have so i had a, a like sort of rough vision for an ep called to be or not to behave and we have some songs that we've played live uh supercomputer and night owl we've played um we've gotten to play live we probably we're not gonna do anything with those for this because you know we envision to take those to a you know proper studio and and really, you know, they're, they're big rock songs. So we want to do those properly, but these are quiet little lonely, lonely songs. So that's, you know, so yeah, you'll, there'll be a couple more and we'll keep putting them out basically until I either run out of material or we get out of this. So. And then your mood will change. And, it'll be... and maybe that'll happen at the exact same time. Maybe the, maybe that's the, maybe that's, if I could just clear the decks of all the unused ideas that I have, the coronavirus will just magically disappear as he says. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, with the temperature 
Um, right. So the people that um, your friends, your creative friends, I know I see this with some of my other friends, some are just completely, have been completely sapped of their creative flow. Yeah. I was too, though. I was too. I was yeah. definitely. And I, and, and I wouldn't, I would say that uh, at times I, st I still am. Um, I, you know, a lot of these ideas that I'm using, um, I, I, I'm trying to think what, when was the, like, I mean, I've, to have like a genuine, beautiful idea in all this, um, you know, I'm not sure that uh, it's, I've even seen that yet, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, but when it happens, it feels really good. And um, I, I just, I once, and the thing is, once you get rolling on, that's why I wanted to make this like, sort of put the cart before the horse and say, these are the sessions we're doing. So it, it just sort of like commits me to doing more of these things because I think it's going to be healthy for me and hopefully enjoyable to people who like our music. Well, I enjoy it a lot. I like your, I like the moodiness of it. Cool. Thank you. You know, I think it's, um, I mean, it's definitely, I, I don't know if appropriate is the right word. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, no, I mean, I know what you mean. It does, it's a, it does sort of hit, hit a nerve for us. Cool. Thanks. I mean, that's, I, I always try to, at least if it, if it can't, if, if it can't be catchy, then I at least want to sort of set a tone. Um, yeah. And I, you know, uh, I, I, it's that piano riff I just kind of had playing like, um, you know, is, and I was like, what am I going to do with this? And, you know, it's finally found a, uh, found a place. When you get a riff, mm -hmm. how do, what do you do with it? Do you, do you do a voice memo? Like, what do you do with it? How do you, um, how do you store it? How do you save it? So that riff, I definitely was playing around on the piano and, and it's not, you know, <laughs> when I say riff, it's not that complicated. It's just, you know, it's just, very, it's just you know, just a little I, melody line. I, I'm, I don't claim to be anything, any maestro. I just, just came up with something and I'm like, all right, you know, I sort of looped that and I said, all right, what am I going to do with this? And you just sort of layer on, on top of that. And um, so, yeah, some things, that was definitely not a voice memo song. I definitely have a lot of voice memos. So I guess that's the next step in this whole <laughs> Yeah. Antibody sessions project <laughs> is going through all my iPhone. That's like yeah. the second tier when things get yeah. really weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I have a ton of those. But no, this was actually just kind of, um, I don't know, just, I just sometimes you play around with something um, and the music comes first and sometimes the idea comes first. Uh, that's the way I, you know, I, it, there's no real set. Path. Do you feel like you're a better songwriter with the more scotch that you drink? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, all right, so I think that there's a way. So I think that uh, when I sit down to, to actually get into the process, I definitely like to have a beverage, but that's more because I'm getting cozy into the, I don't know, the, the long sort of evening ahead of sitting there in front of the screen trying to figure things out. And uh, no, not, not, I mean, the thing is I, I can't, uh, I, I, I can't, if I get too silly, I can't do, I can't do anything. So I don't. I, I, I water everything down. Lots of ice. Lots of ice. That's <laughs> yeah. my secret. It always looks yeah. like I'm drinking a lot, but it's a lot of ice and water in there. <laughs> so no, um, to, to get things, my ideas actually uh, ha happen at really weird times. I mean, I'll wake up with an idea. Um, uh, so the idea usually is something that comes out of a pretty sober moment. Um, yeah. When I sit down to work, yeah, I like to have, you know, a, a drink just to, you know, because I know I'm going to be there for a while. So it's like, loosens like, you up, loosens you loosens up, gets, you up the, a little bit. Yeah. gets the blood flowing. But I can't, I can't get, uh, I, I, I would never, I, the days of getting hammered and <laughs> it never worked anyways. It's, it's just a mess. You can't do that. So. And you got to stay healthy too. So. so I want a, I want a goddamn Glenn prediction. Okay. We're, we, we know that this COVID-19 world has been very fluid and it's ever changing and um you know maybe we've hit sort of a rut and there's peaks and there's valleys and whatever mm -hmm. um what's a goddamn glenn prediction based on all of your analysis are we looking at the end of 2020 are we talking about 2021 what's your predictions about how this might slowly turn to the new normal well unfortunately i think it's going to be um a few sort of races to get out the gate too soon. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's what I think, because I think mm -hmm. you have this, this tension between the medical community and you know, some parts of the business community, although those parts are more politically represented. The actual business is a lot of people are being smart about this. Um, I, I, think that, I think that in mass, 
because we, I really am, <laughs> I'm really inspired by the way this is being handled. Um, I think that we'll have, prediction is a tough one to say. I, I guess I would say that, uh, now are you referring strict specifically to music or just everything? Oh, whatever, whatever you want. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of failed attempts at getting out the gate. And I think that's that happening gonna, in Germany right now, for example. Right. And I think that that's going to stagger into the summer, unfortunately. I know that yep. the rumble is currently, it's gonna, I, but I think it's going to stagger into the summer. Um, I think that, um, I think that by fall, see, it gets tough because when flu season comes around, they're saying that it's all about the resources. So if the flu and coronavirus are still, if they're happening at the same time, it's all about those resources. If you can't get enough people, if you can't have enough staff in the hospital or you can't, don't have enough hospital beds, that's when it really becomes a crisis. It's like not so much the actual, inf it's the infection rate, but the, is, it, do you have the resources to manage it, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I honestly, I don't mean to be a bummer. I don't see the real new normal. And, and I, it's not the normal normal, but mm -hmm. the new normal with all the new rules and logistics, spring 2021 that's yeah. my personal opinion yeah. i don't you know i hope i'm wrong uh yeah. but that's i don't that's think you I, are i don't think you're far off and i think it's going to take some time for people to have um, a level of confidence mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. only in you know and how they feel about going out but also confidence in businesses and um all of the strict new guidelines we're going to have to operate under i know yeah. For myself, I'm a pretty healthy person, but I don't take that for granted. Yeah. Uh, and I know that a lot of a lot of my friends, you know, right right around our age, where we're thinking, I I don't want to I don't want to get a hold of this at all. Yeah. I had a very exotic virus like about 10, 15 years ago, and um, it was. I always said to myself, it was so weird. I said, if I ever got this as an old man, it definitely would have killed me. Wow. It was so unusual. And it, the, the thing I keep reading about is the lingering effects of this thing and how there are so many different kinds of symptoms that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's dangerous because, and, and they thought children were safe from it. And now they're saying that there's got some kind of offshoot. So mm -hmm. again, it's, it's all day to day. I just been trying to sort of live in this I, big thing. Best thing to do is just read, good information. I know you read the paper and stuff. Just mm -hmm. feel like, cause I, you know, I'm very selective with what I, with what I read and what I like ingest. I'm very, very selective. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is the doctors are, they know what they're talking about. I mean, they, they, you know, they're, they're, you mean the doctors who went to school for all those years are smarter than the guy that you went to high school with and still lives at home with his mother? Right. And I, but I've always, you know, I have doctors in my family, uh, I have medical professionals in my yeah. family. And um, so, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you got to listen to them, you know, it may be Absolutely. tough medicine sometimes, but uh, listen, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be one of these statistics. Uh, or at least I, I'm going to do everything that I can. I don't want to be. Not be want, one. <laughs> it, it's so much a part of um, the forefront of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. It's, I, and I say this, um, there was, you know, we lived through the pre 9-11 world and the post 9-11 world. I know, right? It's going to yeah. be much like that in terms of how it resets history. We're yeah. going to have a pre-COVID world and there will be the post-COVID world when we get to the far other side of this. Absolutely. Where it's going to really change, the, the narrative is, going, is really going to change with everything that we do. We're going to be like, remember yeah. when we couldn't go out and remember when we couldn't see shows and, oh, remember... Remember when we had shows? I mean, right. I really, really hope that our show attending, show performing, you know, live presentations resume in a healthy way. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be pretty anemic for a little while. I think that what we need to do is take a look at what, what can we do? Again, I keep coming back to like, all right, we know what we can't do. What can we do? Like, what can we do with like outdoor stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, can we have like- Drive-ins. Outdoor... Right, drive. I, I was like, you know what, everybody, I, I would love to go to a drive-in. And, you know, I see that they're doing some stuff like that with concerts. Yeah. Um, that seems a little, like, harder because, I mean, it, it looks like they're being broadcast anyway. So I'm not sure what the, like, you know, uh, what the point is. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, be creative. Think about different ways we can access our 
we can put on shows, we can do those things. And because there's actually going to be, and I, and I, I don't like to be opportunistic in, in any kind of climate like this, but, but the business person in me says, okay, I have to adapt. I have to survive. I have to retrofit yeah. what I do. What are those things? You know, stop having this pipe dream that, you know, it's just all going to end because that's the, that's the way of thinking that, um, you know, unfortunately it's just, it's, it's childish. It's just not, it's not real. I look at my grandfather, 97 years old, and he's, he, he knows this is a real thing and stuff, but there's a sense of like, like safety in his voice because he's mobilized before. He knows what yeah. it is to like, yeah. you know, his shelves in his basement with cans of food and everything are a good like indication of how well he mobilizes. He's, he's just one built for that. And we got to do the same thing. We have to sort of rise to the, to the challenge. And I think for the most part, we're going to. I think the majority of um, thinking people understand that we got to ride this out, that it's not just going to one day we're going to flick the switch and everybody's going to be, you know, going to their jobs and going no. to retail and all of these things. I think the majority of thinking people understand that. And then there's always that, um, there's always that those groups of people that are just always kind of bubbling under anyway, mm -hmm. that take these opportunities to just bubble over entirely. And I yeah, think, yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing. This isn't new. That's no, no. It's, and that's going to play out. Like I said, there's going to be all these like sort of repeated like races to get out the gate. And then for enough people, I think it's going to become personal. Like they're going to lose yeah. somebody. They're going to see the real, because I don't, people just don't, once they see the impacts of these things, which they're in a lot of parts of the country, they're not yet. Once it becomes real for them, it's going to change. It's the, and the numbers are really starting to change in some of those places who mm -hmm. hadn't seen much. Like impact. New Hampshire, like New yeah. Hampshire. Yeah. New Hampshire was, um, they weren't doing any testing either for quite a long time. I don't know what's changed there, but New Hampshire definitely wasn't doing the testing that right. some of the surrounding States of even the same sizes, but, um, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. it was great to chat with you. We Let's need to do, do this sometime. more often. Yeah. Yeah. This is fun. This yeah, we need to we need to ramp up the goddamn Glenn show back. I was gonna say, while. all you need is a green screen too. We could just do this, you know. Can I, I can put anything behind me. And... I mean, I can <laughs> I can put stuff behind me. In fact, um, for when I was working, I'm not working now. Uh, when I was working, I put um, a big shark like eating me behind me, and oh, that's awesome. somebody that somebody that I was working with at the time was so offended by it. They were like, I can't, I can't, I can't look. <laughs> Well, you love like, sharks. Well, you're no fun. I love sharks. Oh, God. Shark yeah. week. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Ugh. Well, it was great to see you. Good to um, see you too, Angel. It's, I don't know when I'm going to see you guys in person again. Yeah, but let's do this again. We'll do this. But uh, Yeah, let's let's set something up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and of course, I'll, I'll play, the video will be up at bostonemissions.com. Of course, the song will be part of this week's show. Awesome. Cool. And, um, you know, we'll go from there. We're going to roll with the changes, like Ario Speedwagon said. Yes. Is that what they said? They roll with the changes? Roll with the changes. Is that the... Do -do 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 what song is that? Wait, oh, you take it on the run, baby. That's the way... No, that's, that's a different you one. You know, I've, I've actually had a, a, a newfound appreciation. I worked at Classic Rock Radio. I know all this shit. But the Ozark appearance, they were in Ozark. <gasps> yes. Awesome. Yeah, right? that was a great Kevin... show. Holy shit. What are, you on the phone. what are you watching real quick? Uh, what am I watching right now? Um, you know, we actually, so we got impatient about, we don't have AMC, so we bought Better Call Saul new season yeah. um, via Prime. We just okay. finished that uh, awesome show. I mean, God, that <laughs> this last, I, I'm assuming the second, uh, the next season has to be the last because it's all sort of connected. I, I, I think it is. I think it's, yeah. it's the very final one, yeah. Really good. Um, what am I watching? I, I think that's kind of like the last, Thing that I, we've been sort of, you know, there are things that I watch by myself and my mm -hmm. wife watches her things too. I, I can't, you know, I, I, that's probably the last thing. Better mm -hmm. Call Saul. If you haven't watched the latest season and you can get it, I would definitely watch it. It's, it's awesome. Okay. So that'd be my recommendation. Well, thanks for checking in. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Let's, um, let's do this again soon. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, if you want, we can um, spin around it. I'll just send you an invite. Uh, via my yeah, phone. let's do you know, it. Even to just hang out or whatever. I'm in. Cool. All, All right. right Love to everybody, Betty. Yeah. Yep. Honey yeah, pie. Didn't make an appearance, yeah. Yeah. My dogs are actually surprisingly quiet this time around. They're all upstairs. I was gonna say, yeah, no doggies or anything. That's my <laughs> right. favorite thing with this thing. I've been watching PBS NewsHour, 
And yeah. I noticed one of the guys who's high sledding, I see like this little bump on his couch. And I was noticing it. And sure enough, like a couple of days ago, they Judy Woodruff did a whole sort of like thing about the PBS NewsHour staff and their pets at home and stuff. <laughs> and he, I knew it. I was like, that guy has a little kitty over there. So yeah, it's cute. I can't, I, I, you know, that's really helped me stay a little bit more balanced. I always say this about my, about my dogs. I feel, really feel like they've helped me stay a bit more balanced in this exceedingly crazy town time. Yeah, what a great time to be a pet owner. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, they, um, yeah, I mean, Betty is, <laughs> she's, she's getting all the affection and uh, she's loving it. So. <laughs> all right. All right. Good to well, see yeah. you. Let me know when this is up and I'll uh, share an update. I sure will. All right. Take care of you. All right. Exactly. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Good night. Bye. Boston Emissions with Angel Wood. Oh!